This video will demonstrate the very simplest way of using a time series variable. When you're creating a new project, one of the questions you get is what kind of time series resolution you want. In this case, I choose one month while my time step is one day. So let's make a variable representing the change of a level or something. This value should change the level, the flow and the rate. I put the rate exactly equal to my constant and we initialize the level. By running the model, we see that we have a simple change of this. We get 60 liters at the end because there are 12 months in a year. To control this uh, input, we can make a slider being able to change it. I also set the scale of this from minus 10 to 10. To get time to change it, I slow down the simulation a bit. Now we can run the simulation with no change or lots of change or negative change. If looking at these variables, all of them are scalar values. You can use a value inspector to see this one, 2002. The rate has a value and so has this constant. So what you see here is a time range added on this because all simulations, they have the time dimension as an implicit dimension. So if for instance, showing these variables in a timetable, you will see that the value is changing over time. If looking here, you see we have different values at different time in the simulation. What if we could have this time dimension available from the start of the simulation? That is a time series variable. So now I would like to show what happens when we change this variable to a time series variable. Then it will not have only one value like this, it will have the time range as an implicit dimension of this variable, even if it is a scalar value without any array or similar. So I say this should be an average time series variable. And now you see we have one value for each. By resetting the model, you will see that these values now are available one value for each month because we've chosen a series resolution of one month. So now we cannot give input through this slider. We need a graph or timetable as input. As you see here, we can set this value to 10, for instance, as a part of this timetable. Normally, in cases like this, we would like to use graphs as input. So if making a graph like this, I can now see here, I chose 10 there, so I can give this as an input of any kind. Then by running the simulation, we see that negative values will go down as the values go up. Time series variables are startup variables, meaning they can only be changed at start time. So now when the simulation is at stop, I do not have the ability to change these values. By resetting the model, I can again change the values here. Of course, I can make this one permanent if desired. By running, you see we have an increasing value here and it increases all the time, but less increase at the end. Here we can see the values by number. You can also see by changing the first one here. I change the first one, looking in the table. There I change the next one and so on. This simplifies a lot when you want to give input. There is another video where also these two variables are converted to series variables. Thank you for watching.